Moving on, last team of the day. This would be Kyle's San Francisco 49ers. The uh, look, the Super Bowl runner-up from a couple of years ago went six and ten last year. They had injuries that just decimated the team. Uh, could yeah. not get over the hump. They played valiantly in multiple games, even with a bunch of dudes out. Uh, the lines were decimated. The quarterback position had all kinds of issues all year, and. They traded a bunch of picks, and they traded a bunch of dudes to move up and go shore up that quarterback position to make sure if Jimmy G is going to be hurt, but we're going to be fine because we're about to develop the next superstar. Uh, and maybe that's what they got. I don't know that I necessarily agree with trading up that much, but we shall see. Yeah. Their, uh, their needs were cornerback, edge, center, and defensive tackle. Here's what they did. First round, pick number three, Trey Lance. Obviously, they moved way up and gave up a lot of assets to be able to go and get him. He's the quarterback from North Dakota State. Uh, the fewest passes thrown in a career by a top-five quarterback since the 1960s. He's only thrown yeah. like 330-something passes. Um, who knows what you're going to get? You know, I, I, I see all the tools. I see, you know, they talk about the intangibles and all that. We've only seen it for one season. Um and, and yeah. even with North Dakota State, you know, they played in a national championship game. They beat James Madison 28-20, to 20, uh, you know, a couple of years ago now, 2019. And and he only threw the ball 11 times. Now, when you only have to throw the ball 11 times to win, that's good. It also lets me know, eh, okay, like, was it was it the quarterback or was it something else? I mean, he had 28 touchdowns, zero picks. Um, but either way, we'll move on from Trey Lance. Obviously, I'll let Kyle and Chris jump in on him. Round two. Oh, man. They get Aaron Banks, guard out of Notre Dame. I think that's a fantastic pick, um, and Kyle Shanahan knows this. I think most smart people around this league know you're going to go get an offensive lineman, go get somebody from Notre Dame. Like, very simple. Yep. Uh, round three, Trey Sermon, running back out of Ohio State. thought that was a fantastic pick. Uh, we all know the zone run scheme that Kyle Shanahan does. Trey Sermon's going to fit right in there. Ambry Thomas in the third round, cornerback out of Michigan. Kind of like that. That was their uh, compensatory pick. Um, Jalen Moore, offensive tackle out of Western Michigan in the fifth round. Diamadre, uh, Dia Diamadore, Dia whatever, Lin Linar, <laughs> Linwar, luck. quarterback out of Oregon. I've watched him play. I can never say his name. I have no idea how you pronounce this. But uh, but the quarterback out of Oregon can can play. He can fly. Like he's, yeah. Sometimes he's in the wrong position. This is kind of like that Andre Sisko thing. Uh, I, I think he's kind of boomer bust, right? And if you can somehow teach him – to not be in the wrong spot all the time, then uh, then you got a guy. So Talanua uh, Hufanga, safety out of USC. Man, they are they are taking these West Coast things to heart. I'm telling you. Fifth round and sixth round, Eli Mitchell, running back out of Louisiana Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns, and Billy Napier's offense kind of ran, you know, the same way that he ran uh, pretty much all season, uh, and has been that way for the last three years. I, I think overall, you know, a, a winning. A winning draft, I think. Uh, there were some things I didn't like. It's not, you know, if we had to give letter grades, this wouldn't be my highest one. But uh, but I think that the picks were successful. I think they did okay here. Yeah, so I'm really torn about this, and that's why I needed your guys' breakdown on some of these players because I love my 49ers, and I'm done with Jimmy Garoppolo. Just completely over this guy, not because he doesn't have ability, but he cannot stay healthy. So It's, his, it's not his ability. His, it's his availability. It's his availability. Absolutely right. So, first of all, I think it's a win because they did not overdraft Mac Jones. Because why in the hell would you try to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo by drafting essentially the same exact guy, but maybe a little healthier? Trey Lance, though, man, that's a big question mark. And look, maybe later in this draft, like Sermon's going to fit right in. Of course, Tevin Coleman's gone. Raheem Mostert, we know he has durability issues as well. And even when he's fully healthy, Kyle Shanahan moves those running backs in and out. Raheem Mostert, even when he's the bell cow of the offense is only playing about 52 percent of the snaps when that happens so hopefully this trey sermon kid is good i'm glad you guys told me that you think he's good because i don't know much about him and i every I, you know mel kuyper who's i think mel kuyper's a real asshole and i don't really like mel kuyper's analysis i just got to tell you i can't stand that guy but he's telling me they reached for everything here but I do think they address needs. I love getting an offensive lineman out of notre dame you're absolutely right and we need to figure out a way to keep Jimmy Garoppolo upright because Trey Lance is not ready to play like that. When you draft that high and the player is not really expected to, or nor do you really want him helping your team next year. It's hard for me to say it's a great draft. And let's not forget from, I believe it's from 2009 till 2016. 
every quarterback drafted in the top five of the draft is no longer with the team that drafted them. So that just tells you right there, this is a risky little game you're playing with a guy who threw something you're at like 331 passes and had one outstanding year. I get it, but it's going to take a while for this kid to get ready. So it's really hard for me to say the only thing I was happy about is it wasn't Mac Jones. That was it. I didn't want Mac Jones. I didn't want Mac Jones. I didn't want Mac Jones. Screw Alabama. Screw that team. That's right, Gary. <laughs> Tired of Alabama kicking the crap out. Just hey, ridiculous. Tell, tell me this. Oh, tell Alabama. me this. If, if they had not traded up to number three, if they had stuck firm at number 12, how would you have felt about Mac Jones at 12? I would have felt much, much better about that. You there just you can't give up all the assets you, you gave can't up give to up bring two in first round picks for it. I agree. No, you just you just can't do it. And Trey Lance, I'm really iffy on it. Look, I'm glad it wasn't Mac Jones, but really, we're gonna. Uh, I don't know what they signed. You're not gonna hear me question Kyle Shanahan's football acumen. To me, no. he is the smartest mind in the NFL. It's in my opinion, it's not even close. I think he's at, well, maybe Andy Reid is right there. With them, of course, Belichick. I'm not going to disrespect Bill Belichick. Well, the, the That's Lance absolutely thing, ridiculous. What, what we haven't brought up about Trey Lance is the the thing that we saw the most from North Dakota State is he has an explosive ability to be able to run. Like he can, right. and he is kind of the future uh, that the quarterback position is in the NFL. Guys that can move around in the pocket, guys that can get out and get you some yardage. Uh, he takes sure. up those empty yards that you don't really see a whole lot on the stat sheet, but you know it's it's second and seven and nobody's open, and you need to go yeah. make something happen. You can go get three, four yards and make a third and manageable as opposed to whatever else. Mac Jones would have not yeah. been able to do that. Uh, but Trey exactly. Lance might be able to. So stuff like that I think is and very I mean, important. If you looked at the quarterbacks, Trey Lance is probably the one with the most Mahomes upside, right? If you're looking for the next Patrick Mahomes, this guy you know, seems like he's got that kind of ability. It's impossible to compare him to him and really unfair to compare him to him. I would have been more comfortable if it was Fields here in the three spot. I'm not going to lie. I thought when I watched Fields compete against elite competition, I thought he was the best quarterback in this draft just for my money, and that's who I would have been more comfortable with him taking because, look, chances are Trey Lance is going to see the field next year, unfortunately. Jimmy Garoppolo has never proven that he can stay on the field, so now we're going to be throwing this kid into the fire, and you just really hope that the injuries don't pile up because you touched on it. The 49ers had the most money on injured reserve last year, over $81 million in contracts on injured reserve. It's the most ever in the history of the NFL. If the team stays healthy, the 49ers are a legit contender to win the NFC. But I don't – they didn't – their impact player, their marquee player they drafted is not going to be the reason they get there. So that's why I downgrade the draft a little bit, like some of the other pieces, but way too many question marks for me to cheer on. So I just need to hear you guys tell me some good things about Ambry Thomas. We need help in the defensive backfield. I need to know he's good. Trey Sermon, I need to know he's good. Aaron Banks, I already know he's good. He's a guard out of Notre Dame. He's going to be just fine. He's going to start. and <laughs> He's going to play 15 years and probably make seven Pro Bowls. And uh, so I'm happy about that. Real 50-50. I didn't love the trade-up. I, I understand it, uh, but I didn't love it. And uh, certainly doesn't help their team total for next year, I will tell you that. So, so I, I will I will be the Trey Lance defender here, okay? I, I actually like Trey Lance a lot. I, I watched all of the ESPN propaganda on all these quarterbacks, and he's the one that I actually bought all the sauce on, okay? It, it is not his fault that he did not play more than one year, okay? Because right. it's not his fault that he – played and COVID moved his entire football schedule to the fall uh, and to the sure. spring. And so he just wasn't able to play last year. All right. Yeah. Had he played last year with this North Dakota state team against what we saw in FCS just now, um, he would have gotten some really good competition. We would have gotten some, some, some good film on him and we'd have gotten to see him do more things. All right. So, so that's, that's out of his control. He went and he spent his year working out while everybody else is playing, working out with agents, working out with all of these guys that do nothing but get you ready for the NFL, okay? So remember that he didn't spend his last year in college. He spent his last year already learning what the NFL wants him to do. So he's a little more – I'm going to – I love that information. That makes me feel I'm going to bet he's a better. little more polished than we think he is, okay? Excellent. The kid's got okay. an incredible mind. He's super smart. He's able to learn the offenses way faster than all these other guys based on the, the acumen of, of, of all the interviews and tests that these guys have taken um, uh, up to the draft. And I like running quarterbacks because, A, Kyle Shanahan already has the best run game in football, right? And it's not close, by the way. Right. 
if you have a running quarterback, it makes it that much harder to run the ball or to stop the run. It's just right. almost impossible. Right. So I think he's good. I think he's going to be able to figure out the throw and th- not figure it out. I think he can throw. I think we've seen him throw. I think we've t- we just haven't seen him throw a lot. Okay. All right. Who cares? Like, can he do it? I think he can. It doesn't matter. I, we'll find out on Sundays, but, but I, I, he's played quarterback his entire life. I don't think there's any reason to doubt that he can't throw the football. Okay. The Trey Sermon pick that you're worried about or questioned about Trey Sermon is an absolute monster. He's an absolute monster. I think Trey Sermon's going to take this job. My my problem, so so in like dynasty fantasy leagues and things like that, mm-hmm. my issue with moving up to try to get Trey Sermon in different spots is is the fact that Kyle Shanahan is always going to run two to three running backs at a time. Yeah. You've talked yeah. about it. If, if you're the bell cow, quote unquote, you're only going to get at best you're getting fifty percent of the touches. Right. Exactly. That's the only argument for him. That's the only reason he is not one of the top premier like dynasty draft guys this year in, in football. But Trey Sermon's going to be a monster in Kyle Shanahan's offense. Um. Well, so, so today's a win for me. Then I love it. You hate the no, Seahawks I, I and you love team, the Forty Nine. Team- I'm chilling back now. <laughs> what I didn't like, I didn't like the idea of giving up two first round picks to move up to three because I didn't think it was necessary. I just, right. I just thought it was unnecessary completely. I do believe that had you not moved up to three, you would have been able to get trail. Maybe you could have moved up to seven. Maybe you could have moved up to mm-hmm. whatever. But I think, I think Trey Lance would have been there. I am with you that I would have rather had Fields, by the way. I, I, I'm higher yeah. on Fields than Lance. But obviously, a lot of other people aren't. Fields fell for a reason. I don't know why. I don't believe in yeah. it. I don't agree with it. But He, he holds on you know, to the football. I'm not making these picks. Yeah. So yeah. I think they did the best job in this dra- out of this conference, out of this division. I, I trust what they did. I think their first three picks are going to be seen as home runs. I don't think it's Love close. It. I like it. All right, tomorrow we are going to hit on the AFC North, and then Thursday we are going to hit, or sorry, AFC and NFC North, and then the AFC and NFC East on Thursday. Uh, Fellas, anything y'all want to toss in on it? No, just I absolutely loved it. Thanks for making me feel better about the 49ers, and if you're watching (laughs) on my channel, don't forget, check these guys out. I love these guys, love doing the shows, and I love ripping heaters during the show too. It just feels right, so what a a day today. I appreciate you guys, man. (laughs) Of course, go and check out Kyle at DFS Bachelor on YouTube. You can also find him at the exact same address on Twitter. Uh, you can find us, winningcureseverything.com and sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF, sbrpicks.com slash NFL, and sbrpicks.com slash MLB. Fellas, I think that's going to be it. So let's, uh, let's dive out of here. All of you that watched today, thank you so much for being a part of the show. If you would, tell a friend. Of course, we would certainly appreciate that. It helps support the show. And uh, let's dive out. You guys take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully all of your picks cash this week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.